Hello, everyone. It's 1 p.m. in Chicago on a warm and windy Saturday. Thank you for joining us for our 13th annual MathCon Finals Award Ceremony. MathCon is a national competition that gives students across the nation the opportunity to compete against other students to enhance and excel their mathematics interest in education. Since 2015, 250,000 students have participated in MathCon. This year, students from 47 different states and Canada have participated in the first round of MathCon. Today, you are in the 90th percentile. 1,023 math geniuses from 854 schools. You are the best of the best, so congratulations. Before the award ceremony begins at 2.30 p.m. Central Time, we have a full program of fun online contests and activities. Go ahead and share this YouTube live link with your family, friends, and on social media. We know what a special day this is for you, and you have worked hard to make it here to MathCon Finals competition. So don't be shy, share this with everyone you know, and remember to tag us using hashtag MathCon2021. We will begin the day with math trivia with Kahoot. Anyone and everyone can participate in this math trivia contest. There is a bit of a video delay on YouTube, so if you wish to compete for the top prize, um, which is a shout out during today's award ceremony, um, you're gonna have to join us on Zoom. So the link for the Zoom is going to be put into the YouTube chat now. So you can go ahead and join that. If you're already on Zoom, awesome. Stay here, hang out, let's play Kahoot. Um, if you've never played Kahoot before, here's a quick explanation of how to play. Um, you need, well, people are already on. All right, good, people know this, this is great. Um, so you need one device, a PC, possibly, you know, your laptop, right? Um, a smartphone or a tablet to play Kahoot trivia. Um, you will see the questions and choices on your screen. Um, you'll select the answer of on your device, on your second device. Um, if you have like, your phone, you can answer it on there. Um, don't wait for me to finish reading the question. Just go ahead and answer the question right away as soon as you can, as fast as you can, because speed matters. So the faster that you answer, the greater the points you can earn. Um, so go ahead and go to kahoot.it, and you can see up on the screen is our game pin, which is 483821. Again, that's 483821. Um, and go ahead and enter your name. Uh, keep it appropriate, please. Just your first and last name is fine, or just your first name. Um, maybe a fun nickname is fine. Um, and this is optional. So because of the delay, you can join us on Zoom. You don't have to play on Zoom. You can also play on YouTube. That's fine. Um, let's try it and go ahead with some sample questions. I'm going to read the prompt. You're going to view the answer and go ahead and select the correct answer on your second device. The practice test question is two times two. What is two times two? One, two, three, or four? You have 20 seconds. All right, so 195 people have answered the question and they all answered question four. So that is our first question, great. Um, uh, we will go on to the next question. This is our second practice question. Five plus five equals zero, five, 10, or 15. All right, so the answer is 200 and, or sorry, no, people, 208 people answered the correct answer, which is 10. 
All right. Let's go on. Um, we're going to get a moment, give a moment here to have people log in. Okay. So if you haven't logged in, go ahead and log in. Our code is 483-821. So we'll just wait one second, just in case people are still logging in. The code is 483-821. Okay. And let's go ahead on to our next question. A farmer has 15 sheep, all but eight of them die. How many sheep does he have left? Four, eight, nine, or six? You have 24 seconds, 22, 20. <laughs> All right, so the answer is eight. So we have 121 people who answered correctly. Great job. We're gonna go on to the next question. Our scoreboard's getting great. Julian G, looking good. All right. What is the next number in this sequence? Four, seven, 11, 16. Is it 20? 21, 22, or 23? Ten seconds left. All right, 181 people answered the question correctly, and the answer is 22. Great job. Oh, Eric Lee has come up to the top of the list here. All right, you guys are looking great. If a dozen eggs cost 12 cents, how many eggs can you buy for $1? You've got 24 seconds, 23 seconds on the clock. And the answer is 100 eggs. Great job, 189 people got it right. Well done. Oh, Felix has taken over the top spot. Wow, with 2,931 2 points. Nice. All right, let's go on to the next question. What is the next number in the series? Yeah, 19, 18 seconds. All right, the answer is 7,348. Well done to 134 of you. Great job. All right, Julian G up at the top of the leaderboard. A doctor gives you three pills telling you to take one every half hour. How many minutes will the pills last? All 
All right, 60 minutes, great job. So 164 of you got it right, well done. Yep, and Chris D, you're up at the top there, wow. Great job. All right, let's go to the next question. A 200 foot train is traveling 200 feet per minute through a 200 foot long tunnel. How long will it take to get through the tunnel? Right. Great job. Two minutes. That was a tricky one. All right, Christy, you've got outs from the top and Maddie Z, you're up at the top there on the leaderboard. Well done. All right, let's go on to that next question. When Brian was 12, his brother was half his age. Now that Brian is 18, how old is his brother? <laughs> Right. The answer is 12. Great job, everybody. That seemed like a pretty good one. All right, let's head on to the next question. We've got, oh, Maddie Z still at the top. Well done, Maddie. If six people meet each other and each shake hands only once with each of the others, how many handshakes take place? Is it 10, 12, 14 or 15, you've got 22 seconds. <music> Right. The answer is 15. Well done to 200 of you. Answering the question correctly. Oh, Felix is back up at the top there. Great. Let's go on to the next question. Double points on these last two questions. A phone and its case cost $110 in total. The phone cost $100 more than the case. How much was the phone? 25 seconds on the clock. Right. Our answer is $105. Well done to 215 of you. All right, Felix is still up at the top. Great job. And we have eight players who lost their answer streak of three. That's all right. Keep trying. We can do this. All right, let's head on to that next question. I believe this is our last question. Double points as well. A lily pad doubles each day. In 20 days, the lily pad will cover the entire pond. When will the pond be half covered? 25 seconds on the clock. <laughs> All 
in 19 days. That is correct. Great job. All right. So let's take a look and see how things shake out. Maddie Z is third place winner. Ian Kim is the second place winner. First place winner is Felix. All right, good job, you guys. Well done. We got some runners up here, Patrick A and Manas P. Well done. Wonderful. You guys did great. That was pretty fun. All right. And to all of those who uh, did a good job answering the questions, great job. It doesn't matter if you don't win, right? You guys had fun playing. All right, so welcome back. Great job, everybody, for playing a wonderful Kahoot game. And if you've never played Kahoot before, then congratulations to you on your first Kahoot game here at MathCon 2021. So I'd like to keep things on schedule here. And we are going to go on to our next guest. Um, I'd like to introduce him. Uh, he is Patrick Benebush, the Chief Learning Officer at the Math Learning Center. Um, he is an education thought leader with a national reputation and demonstrated history of developing exceptional materials, strong professional skills in ed tech, instructional design, curriculum development, public speaking, for, uh, teaching, sorry, uh, for over two decades. He's been uh, a math guy with a lot of energy, creative ideas, ex excellent writing, humor. Uh, let's take it away, Patrick. Awesome. Well, thank you, Michelle. You're and hello welcome. and good afternoon, all the competitors. Uh, as Michelle said, I'm Patrick Venabush. And one thing she didn't mention is I'm a member of the MathCon editorial board, which means that I write and review problems that appear on the MathCon competitions. So if there were any problems on the competition that you really liked, I wrote or reviewed them. But if there were any problems on the competition that you really disliked, well, those were probably written or reviewed by somebody else. So just keep that in mind as we go through today. Um, when I'm not helping out MathCon, as Michelle said, I'm the Chief Learning Officer for the Math Learning Center in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I'm a former math teacher and I love problems. I love writing them, I love solving them, and I love sharing them. And I want to share one with you today. Uh, last year, I wrote a book for teachers called 100 Problems Involving the Number 100, and it contains problems that can be used by teachers in their class with students. And you might think, well, why? that's a little odd. Why would you write an entire book about one number? Well, it's because 100 is a pretty awesome number. So for instance, it's the number of letter tiles that appear in the game of Scrabble. Uh, it turns out that 100 is also the sum of the first 10 odd numbers. And I think this picture shows that rather beautifully. It's one of my favorite things in mathematics actually. Um, and here's a really fun fact that the 100 most common English words represent half of all the words that we use when we write or speak. So that's kind of cool. The, the first hundred really account for a lot of what we uh, actually put into to use. Um, but you don't have to take my word for it that 100 is amazing. One of your fellow competitors today is my son, Eli Venabush. And when I asked him why 100, 100 is an important number, he said, because it's big, but it's not too big. And that picture there is actually Eli and his brother Alex at MathCon a couple of years ago in Chicago. But I think what Eli said is right. 100 is big enough to be exhilarating, but it's not so big as to be intimidating. So I wanna share a problem with you today that involves the number 100. In fact, it's about a grid with 100 squares and it looks something like this, 10 by 10. So what I'm gonna have you think about is how can we cover that grid with non-overlapping squares and how many squares is it gonna to take to do it? So let me give you a couple examples. One example, you could cover the entire grid with just one square that measures 10 by 10. And that's easy enough. And of course, you probably knew that you could do that pretty easily. Or you could cover the grid with four different squares, each of which measures five by five like this. So you kind of see what's going on there. This is the problem as it appeared in my book. And you'll see from the figure that you could also cover the grid with 100 squares if they each measured one by one. Or you could cover it with 25 squares as you can see there in the middle if each square measured two by two or you could even cover with 13 squares as shown on the right, because um, the squares don't all have to be the same size. So here's the question I want us to think about today. For which numbers one through 100, is it possible to cover that grid with the number of squares? 
So you've already seen that it's possible to cover them with one square and four squares. And this image shows it's possible to cover with 100 or with 25 or with 13 squares. But I'm wondering, could you cover it with just two squares? Could you cover it with three squares? Could you cover it with 17 squares or 31 or 68? And that's the problem that I want to investigate as a group today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to display on the, on the screen a recording chart, chart that looks like this. And this recording chart shows the numbers for which we're able to find a covering using that number of squares. So right now it's colored in on 1, 4, 13, and 25. That is, we found a covering that used one square. Um, we found a covering that used four squares. So the cell with the number four was colored in. And then we found coverings with 13, 25, and 100 squares. So those cells are colored in also. So in a moment, I'm gonna give you access to a Google slide deck that you can use to find other possible coverings. And our goal is to find as many different coverings as we can and to fill in as much of this chart as we can before the award ceremony starts. Now that's right, we've only got 15 minutes. So it's gonna take a group effort to get through as many of these as we can. And I'll also tell you that there are some numbers on this chart that are never gonna get colored in because it's not possible to cover a square with that many, uh, to cover the grid with that many squares. So, and as we go, and as you tell me what you found, I'll keep updating this chart. So it'll be updated in real time. And I'll display the chart on the screen while you work. I'm also gonna give you a view only link to this chart so you can see it in your browser too. Um, so I'm gonna paste some links and information into the chat window in just a minute, but I wanna show you what you're gonna see. I'm gonna give you a link to Google Slides exactly as you see here. You don't need to write it down. Like I said, I'll put it in the chat. But when you click on that link, it's gonna ask you to make a copy in Google Drive. And you can certainly do that. And when you make a copy, uh, it takes a few seconds to do that, but you're gonna get a Google deck with three different slides on it. And the first slide just shows you the problem that we already saw, just so you have it for reference. The second slide is kind of a warm up, and I'm gonna ask you to try to create a covering that uses exactly six squares. Um, I'm sorry, 12 squares, and that's the ones that are shown there. Uh, and then the third slide is really the one you're gonna to wanna to focus on because it has any number of different size squares that you might wanna use, and you can drag them around and you can make different things happen on the slide uh, copy that you have. So let me go ahead now and put this into the chat for you. And I see people are already engaged and putting things in there. So I'd love to see that. Um, but you're going to have three links within that, um, within the chat. So the first link, which says make some coverings, is for a Google slide deck that'll let you make those coverings on a 10 by 10 grid. So that's the one that I just showed you. Um, you're going to need to make a copy and that'll be saved to your Google Drive. But if you don't use Google Drive or if you just don't want to use Google Drive, that's fine. You can do the work on paper and you can share your results in the chat as some people are already doing. Um, but I do want to tell you, I see that folks are putting numbers in the chat already, and I love that. I want you to verify what you found, and you can do that in a couple of different ways. If you use the chat and put in a number, I'd like you to explain to me how you got that number. Either tell me that you got 50 because you used, you know, several fives and a six by six or whatever, or the second link that I put into the chat is to a Google form, and you can upload a picture or a screenshot if you use the Google slide or something like that. I just want some proof that you actually found what you found so we can, we can keep this legit. Um, so other, either ways to do it are fine. If you want to submit in the Google form or chat, I'm happy with either of them. I'd prefer the Google form, but I won't, I won't force you to do that. And the third link that's in the chat, which says view our progress is going to be to that recording chart. And I'm going to share that on screen uh, up until the award ceremony starts. Um, it's going to show our collective progress because after all, that's why this session is called crowdsourced problem solving. And then below those links are just how you can share it with me in case you need a reminder. So with that, I'm just going to mostly stop talking. I'm going to bring up that um, progress chart. I'm going to keep adding things that we put in there. Um, and I love that it's filling up so quickly. I hope I can keep up. And maybe around uh, 228 central time, I'll come back and give you an update on where the chart is and maybe give you a little more information about how you can continue if we don't get through all of them. So, um, so and I see that some people are having uh, trouble getting it to copy on Google. If you have that problem, just go ahead and use paper. Um, it definitely has the right settings. I see that some people in there. Um, so I'm hoping that that's okay. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and make my image a little bit bigger here for the progress and the numbers that are coming in. Oh, I see that somebody put in nine already, uh, which we already actually have covered. Um, I have a bunch of people who have said that 20 was possible. So let's go ahead and color that one in. And we'll see how much of this we can fill in as we keep going.
Oh, I got an 11. Uh, thank you, Joanna, for 11. And Krishna gave me 20. A number of people actually gave me 20 as well. Um, Riley said that we could do 96. Um, I'm sorry, 97 uh, using a one by one. Uh, 96 one by ones and one two by two. So let me color in 97. I think that's correct. Uh, Logan and Owen, you guys put some numbers in the chat. Give me, give me uh, some explanation of how you got those numbers that you put in there. Um, oh, some Daniel got 10. I love it. Oh, I got a 37. Um, I don't know if I should count that. That says a Zoom coordinator. I wonder if that's an adult working on this, but I'm going to count it anyway. Um, oh, somebody said all the squares. And actually, you can't actually do every single number that's on this chart. Uh, there are some that are impossible. And that's maybe a little bit of something to think about. Why would it be impossible? Um, so Riley just gave me 94. He said we could do 92 one by ones and then two two by twos. I think Riley may be starting to see something special that's going on here because he gave me nine, gave me 97 and 94 so far. <laughs> and my son just gave me a little bit of technical advice about how to color in these squares. Well, we got another new number. That's 88. Oh, and Owen got a 12. I'm going to try to make it a little bigger there so you can see it. Oh, we got a 76. You guys are doing awesome. This is really filling in pretty quickly. We got five. Uh, Daniel got a 94. Oh, we got a 21 from David. We got 40, 22 with, oh, some five by five, some four by fours, and the rest are one by ones. We got 97 again, 85, that's a new one. Ooh, somebody got 92, that one's not colored in yet, so that's fun. Oh, Chase, tell me how you got 34 and, and Soham, you said 19. I'd love to hear how you got those before I color them in. Oh, uh, Reha said something rather interesting. Got, 80, uh, got 85 by using 84 one by ones and just one four by four. Well, Ishan, I, I see what you say. Ishan said that um, two squares that measure five by 10 because squares can be rectangles. That's true. Squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Oh, and I see the Zoom coordinator is forwarding things. If you accidentally send it to somebody else, he'll send it over to me. Oh, I got a 91 going. Oh, and Soham said seven. Actually, I don't think you can do seven. So I'm going to uncolor that one. Oh, but two of you said seven. I'm curious. So, so give me the number, uh, those of you who got seven, tell me how you got it. Yeah, and William, you're right. It is going to be using the perfect squares. And how do we get them to add up to 100? Um, we got a 21, that's on there again. Oh, uh, Neith, uh, forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but Nathan said two squares, an eight by eight and a six by six. It's true that that'll give a hundred squares, but if you put an eight by eight next to a six by six, you can't use that to cover a 10 by 10 grid. Oh, well, somebody said 50, so we got that one. Oh, 
Ethan, tell me a little more what you're thinking, because I think I agree with you. But I want to hear more about what you typed into the chat there. We got an 82. We got an 85. This is exciting. Lots filling in. Lots there in the middle, though. If you want to try to explore, how can we get some of those numbers in the 40s, 50s, and 60s? Uh, we got a 90. Although I think 90 is also not possible. I'm looking at the one there. And whoever put in 90 did put with a question mark. I don't think that one quite works. Uh, but 92 works for sure. Uh, we got an 89, which I believe is possible as well. Ninety one, Zachary gave us. Somebody said all multiples of three can work, and I'll say that you're onto something there. Um, but I don't think it's every multiple of three that works. There, are, there are some that don't, but I'm not going to tell you which ones don't. When David put in a 16, oh. 76, 85, I think those are ones that are already in there, 89, oh, 34 and 36. Thank you for those, Logan. Arnav got eight, and eight is actually possible. And 84. So this is cool. 40. We got seven. Somebody put it again. Soham sent to me. I don't think seven's possible, Soham. And, and you're not the only one who suggested that. Um, 73. That one's going in there. And 21. 8. 70. That's a new one. I'm going to keep updating this and you guys should have a link to it for sure. Um, and I'll keep updating it with numbers that actually can happen. So thanks. Thanks for giving me these numbers. There's a lot flying in. Um, 8, 40, 92, 67. So one of the things to think about is I'm going to, I know that we're going to head to the award ceremony in just a few minutes. I want to make sure Michelle has some time to do that. I'll keep updating this. I'll leave this up as long as Michelle allows me to do that. But I'll tell you that there are quite a few numbers that can't be covered. Um, there are a whole lot more that can. There's a whole bunch on here that we haven't gotten yet. You can keep working on this problem. Try to figure out which ones can and can't. And one of the things that I think is really cool about math is being able to convince yourself and, and kind of proving to yourself that something is true. Um, so for instance, the number two, uh, we're never going to be able to cover on this chart because in order to do that, you'd have to have... Um, You'd have to have two numbers that either add up to a, somebody said you could have six by six and eight by eight, which works, except you can't cover a 10 by 10 grid with a six by six and eight by eight square, but no other two perfect squares add up to a hundred. So that's kind of a, a quickie proof for why two would never work. So I'm going to color this one in. Oh, I don't know. We'll give it, we'll give it maybe black because um, that one can't be done. Um, but if you keep going and we'll try to keep filling these in, I'll keep adding things from the chat that you guys found. We'll keep making this, uh, We'll keep making this grid color in and it's, we're going to get really close to having quite a few of these. So I, I love it. But that can be something that you take away, trying your own. How many more of these can you get? Oh, we got one there in the fifties. That's exciting. Somebody guessed 98, but didn't say why. I'm not sure 98 is possible. So I need an explanation on that one. And you can just see this chart filling in. It's awesome. Yeah, we're starting to get most of that tens column filled in. Uh, yep, somebody. Oh, uh, I like what Oliver just wrote. And I'm going to share it verbatim. You know what? I'm going to do it, Oliver. I'm going to copy what you said and put in the chat for everyone to see. Because I think this is really exciting.
So Oliver said that you can put in all numbers of the form 100 minus 3n for any number from 0 to 25 as a value for n. So what Oliver is saying is we have 197, 94, 91, 88, 85, 82, 79, 76, 73, 70, 67, 64. And then he's going to say we can keep going with 61, with 58, 55, we already have 52, uh, 49, 46, 43, 40, 37, 34, 31, and I think we can get 28, and then 25 we already have. Oh, look at that. That filled in a whole ton of them. Oh, and somebody said use a six by six square and then the rest with one by one. So that'd be 73, which we have. And then I am two we've got. So Michelle, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I see that folks are having fun, but I know you want to keep going. Yes, so I'm going to sorry. stop. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone. Thank you. That was awesome fun. I'm sorry to have to interrupt all of the fun math, um, but we do want to get to the award ceremony um, exactly right on time which uh, we are, so that's great. Um, but thank you again, Patrick, that was wonderful. Um, and to your boys too, congratulations on being finalists, well done. Um, so if you wanna leave the Zoom link now, it would be a little bit easier for you to view everything um, on time and everything like that if you go to the YouTube, um, the YouTube link, which we will put into the chat right now. Someone will put into the chat for me right now, yes? Okay, um, so welcome to the MathCon National Finals Award Ceremony, yay! Uh, MathCon, just so you guys know, just a quick overview in case you're just joining, us, um, is a national competition that gives students across the nation the opportunity to compete against other students to enhance and excel their mathematics interest and education. Since 2015, when MathCon became a national competition, we have had 250,000 students participate in this event. This year, we had students from 47 different states and Canada participate in the first round. Today, you guys are all in the 90th percentile, 1,034 math geniuses from 854 schools. 854 schools! Uh, and this year we actually opened it up to fourth graders. So hey to all the fourth graders out there. Um, our top five states this year with the most participants in the finals are Illinois, good job. New York, awesome. Florida, okay, awesome. North Carolina, cool. And Indiana. So again, that's Illinois, New York, Florida, North Carolina, and Indiana. Represent all from those places, okay. Um, so these students spent 300, 37,359, did I even say that right? 337,359 minutes on the first round of testing alone. So you guys spent all that time online testing. Um, this is equal to 5,623 hours or 234.3 days or 33.5 weeks, 33.5 weeks. It's almost eight months of uninterrupted test time uh, to make it to the MathCon finals competition. So we're gonna begin the award ceremony without further ado. Um, I'd like to take a moment to remind you guys that you are all champions. Even if you're watching and you didn't make it to finals, congratulations on being an amazing student. Um, we'll begin by starting with honorable mention and follow it with bronze, silver, gold level awards, and then the national champions. In each category, all names will be presented in alphabetical order. In addition to a certificate of achievement and a recognition, excuse me, recognition letter, um, all bronze winners will receive a $50 e-gift card. And, um, sorry, we're not doing honorable mention, cross that out. Um, so we're just doing bronze, silver, gold level awards um, and national champions. So in each category, all names will be presented in alphabetical order, like I said, um, in addition to receiving the certificate of achievement, awesome, frame that, 
um, and a recognition letter that you could use um, possibly to get into college. Um, you're also going to receive, let's see, the bronze award winners will receive a $50 e-gift card. The silver award winners will receive a $100 e-gift card and the gold award winners will receive a $200 e-gift card. All national champions, uh, the top scorer for each grade level will receive a $300 e-gift card. All awards will be sent to you via email within the next couple of weeks. Um, for the best schools award, uh, we have first place, second place, and third place for the schools in each division um, who will win the best schools will be the, where they'll be receiving a plaque <laughs> um, to display in their schools. Um, and plaques will be mailed out next week. Um, and let's get started with our winners. The bronze medals. 12th grade bronze medals. bronze medal. Congratulations to all eighth grade bronze medal winners. Seventh grade bronze medals. Congratulations to all 7th grade bronze medal winners!
all fifth grade silver medal winners. Fourth grade silver medal. Congratulations to all fourth grade silver medal winners. Gold medal. Vedula. Ninth grade math on national champion is Zay Shah. Eighth grade national math on national champion is Andrew Karatu. Seventh grade math on national champion is David Chen. On national champion is Kesav Kalantini. Fifth grade Mathcon national champion is Hayden Hughes. Fourth grade Mathcon national champion is Mark Restapo. Congratulations to all national champions. Most outstanding high schools. In third place is Arkham. 
Intermediate Upper Conservatory from Florida. In second place is Penn High School from Indiana. the 30th Ave School from New York. Most outstanding middle school second place is Kennedy Junior High School from Illinois. And first place is Community House Middle School from North Carolina. Orlando Math Circle in Florida. Second place goes to Root STEM Academy in Nevada. And the first place goes to Birmingham Math Academy in Alabama. Thank you to all elementary school participants. See you guys next spring for MathCon 2022. But wait, there's more. Don't go quite yet. We have a couple of things that we would like to say first. Congratulations to everyone. We're very proud of everyone who participated in the finals competition. And we look forward to seeing you all next year. Uh, and once again, thank you to the students the educators and coordinators, coaches, parents, grandparents, friends, anybody who helped you study and um, you know, congratulations to all of them for their help. Uh, we'd like to um, have the national winners, if you wouldn't mind, join us in Zoom. Um, you can name yourselves with your first and last name and we're gonna ask you a couple questions if you're available. Um, just the national winners, if you wouldn't mind uh, joining us in Zoom. And also, if you're wondering what happened to chess, well, we are having a chess online tournament. Um, the day's not over yet. So if you're interested in participating, you can go ahead and uh, take a look at the link that we'll be putting into the YouTube live chat. Um, and you can go ahead and participate in that MathCon online chess tournament. There's gonna be prizes um, that are awarded. Um, so go ahead and go ahead over to the chess um, tournament there. If you are a national um, winner, go ahead and raise your hand in Zoom so that we can see you and we can talk with you and uh, ask you some questions. And again, thank you everyone for joining us and happy Mother's Day to all of those mothers out there. Thank you for spending your time with us on this afternoon and happy Mother's Day.
So for those of you who are hanging out, hopefully we can talk with you and ask you a couple questions. Um, if you are the MathCon uh, national champion for your grade level. Okay, so let's talk first with Hayden. So give us just a second here to stop our video. Okay. And Hayden, are you in the house? Yes, Hayden Hughes. All right, great. So we're going to unmute you in just a second. All right. So Hayden, how's it going? Let's get you unmuted there. Go ahead. And... Yeah, perfect. I'm so excited. Right? Good job. Congratulations. Did you think you were going to do so amazingly well? Well, I, I was, I, I really enjoy math. And so I, it's very fun to have opportunities like this to express my passion for math and Definitely. I I was I felt really excited when I was doing the problems and so I just felt really good. Good that's awesome so you were confident you knew what we, what you were doing so how did you get ready for math con what did you do? I used the practice tests that you uh, provided cool. and I I uh did the problems and I thought about them afterwards. I tried to uh, do the problems in a time limit that, that, that the actual test is. Yeah. And then review the ones that were trickier for me afterwards. That's great. That's awesome. That's a perfect way to study, right? So what are your future plans? Do you have any career plans that you're thinking about um, with all these strong math skills that you have? Well, I really enjoy math, so I... You're gonna figure something think, out, right? Yeah, and I, I, I know I haven't been thinking about that too much, but I, I think uh, it could involve math. Yeah, definitely. Well, now that you're the fifth grade national champion, you're gonna have to start thinking about it, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, congratulations, Hayden. Thanks so much for chatting with us. Bye, thank you. Bye. All right, next we're gonna talk with Zay. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, it's Zai. But, Zai, but... okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> awesome, congratulations. So what grade level are you? You're... I'm the ninth grade. Ninth grade national champion, great. So same kind of questions for you. Like how did you get ready for MathCon? I guess like similar to the um, Hayden, I just like reviewed all the sample tests you guys gave. And also in general, I did a lot of math competition kind of like oriented questions to prepare myself because I feel like a lot of sort of like the math competition genre of question they're kind of similar so just yeah. lots of math comps in general yeah great that's awesome that's really smart um so what about your experiences with the online online test how did you did you like testing online was it kind of different I guess testing online is more comfortable because like you have the privacy of your own room and it's like really quiet and everything as compared to in person but I guess the in-person math con experience is a lot more fun because you got to like see everybody else. So yeah. Yeah. So you like kind of both of them. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so what about you? Future plans, career plans, career path? I don't have anything completely planned yet. Maybe a degree in applied math or some sort of STEM field, but cool. nothing too concrete. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. Well done. Great. All right. Let's um, talk with Karthik. Is Karthik ready? Is Uh, hello. Hi. Um, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, there uh, you are. Oh. Uh, All right, Karthik, tell us about yourself. 
Um, I'm in 10th grade and I've just been uh, doing math competitions for a long time now. I think ever since like in third grade when my parents um, told me about that, uh, told me about a local math competition and ever since then it's just been studying. Awesome. So you are a math guru. So what, um, what did you do during the test to kind of keep yourself calm and, and you know, ready for the test? Um, one thing I, um, well, I mean, good preparation is, all, is one thing that uh, like helps you build confidence during the test. Because like uh, one thing I noticed during in the practice test is that a lot of the problems were very similar to each other. Like most of them had like, the, were like the almost the exact same problem, but, but with the numbers change. So I figured that some some of those kinds of topics would show up on the national test as well. So Definitely. like if you study for like those topics a lot more then like you can um, you can prepare well. Yeah, great. That's totally true. Confidence is key, right? Um, what state are you from? Uh, I'm from Florida. Florida. All right. So what school do you go to? Uh, I go to uh, James S. Rickards High School. Okay. So did anybody else from your school take the math contest too or was it just you? Uh, no, I was the only person that I'm aware of in my school. Cool. You're the only person brave enough to take it. That's great. Well, congratulations. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks for talking to us. No problem. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And again, happy Mother's Day. MathCon signing out.